as an employer, you are also hiring civil engineer and uh, you're also hiring for many of the other uh, sister concerns and many of the, you know, same people in the fraternity. So I would like to understand that as an employer, uh, as you're employing civil and structural engineers, what would you like to tell our fresh graduates or people sitting in the college right now that what are the industry's expectations from a fresher so that they become so that they are they become eligible to enter into the company? Okay. So first of all, you should know the softwares, different different softwares related to the platform. Don't take only one or two softwares and come and ask the CV. It's, it's not going to work. The number of softwares are required to learn. Second thing is you should have the domain expertise to a certain extent. I know that you are fresher. I am not expecting that you should be like a, a James Bond in that particular industry. I am just asking you that if I am having 40 story building, have you designed 5 story building? That's a minimum thing, correct? If, you, if I am having 20 story building, have you designed at least 2 story building or 3 story building? So that kind of domain expertise experience at least for a couple of projects or three, four projects is required. And that too on the live project, not on any dummy project. Dummy project. Third thing is code. How you are utilize different, different codes to solve that particular project. If you are using this, then what will happen? If you are using that, then what will happen? And not only one code, people are teaching that IS456 this year, then IS13920 this year, IS16700 this year. It doesn't work that way. All the codes are integrated to each other. Actually speaking, there should be the subject called, you know, engineering codes. Anyway, that's a separate question. But what I'm trying to tell you is, the codal based knowledge is definitely required. I will definitely ask that question to the person because in designing is basically like a tripod. Another thing is, uh, uh, which is very important, we call it as the soft skill and uh, uh, you know, the kind of interpersonal skills that you should be able to because a project management is something that you need to convince the client that how this design is best according to me. So uh, you require some kind of communication skill, dress up skills, as well as the what we call it as the ABC, appearance, body language and communication. So as an employer, I definitely see these kind of things to the students. I think it's. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I would just to summarize, if you are a fresher, you are, you are a civil engineer sitting in the college right now. Just remember one thing that if you want to enter into the industry, then you definitely need to acquire skills which align with the expectation of the industry. And if you are just uh, just dependent on the subjects that you are studying in the college, unfortunately, our education system is such that we are used to rote learning, wherein we are learning so many subjects and all four years of engineering and two years of MTech is all about uh, doing the subjects, doing the practical exam and uh, getting the marks. Basically, it is a cycle which starts in the first year that first exam second exam third exam final year first internal second internal third internal final exam and during this time we are busy studying many subjects but unfortunately when you go in the company these subjects are like puzzles you know separate puzzles you have until and unless you know that how to join this everything together in order to get an output for the industry you will not become eligible to get into any of the companies no matter what percentage you have so please remember your percentage will definitely play important role till certain level. But when you want to enter into the industry, percentage is something which will take a backseat and your skills, knowledge and relevant experience will be on the top priority list for your employer while hiring you. So don't just depend on your marks, don't just depend on the subjects clearing, uh, depend on the industry expectations. And in today's world, all the information is available at a click and our company also has so many one-to-one -one, uh, counseling sessions if at all you would like to meet us in zoom meeting or in person in our Bangalore office we always love to meet freshers give them one-to-one -one counseling so please seek so many industry people are there on LinkedIn also seek help of the people who are in the industry rather than depending on the subjects alone and on the percentage alone because by that time you would have wasted four years of your engineering and then you will feel I'm still jobless and I still don't have the skills so the whole crux of the thing is you need a lot of on-the-job internships. You need to be in touch with the industry people in order to always keep yourself updated about the expectation of the industry. And please remember learning only software 
AutoCAD, Start Pro, eTabs or Revit, only softwares will not help because finally you should know how to use the tools and technologies in order to get the, to drive the project from start to end. For example, in the structures department, of course, from center line plan to GFC, you should be able to do. So it's not about just knowing one software eTabs or one software Start Pro. It is about much more beyond that. We have said in our many of our other videos also. So. Keep yourself updated as per the expectation of the industry. This is the key to enter into the industry. With this, I would like to thank Sandeep sir for coming here thank and giving so all the insights to you all. If you have more questions, please write in the comment box given below or and get in touch with us on the numbers on the screen for one-to-one -one career counseling. All the very best. Happy learning. Thank you very much. Thank you.